Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'm gonna to be breaking a rule that I've had on this channel for about 12 years. And that rule is that I never insult the victim. I criticize the victimizer, but I do not insult the victim when it comes to a manufacturer that has screwed over their users. I'm not gonna be that person that says, you're an idiot, you bought a Samsung. You're an idiot, you bought an Apple. You're a dumbass, you bought a Ford. You're an idiot, you bought a Nissan. For a number of reasons. The first is that you make your purchasing decisions based on what you find comfortable in your personal life, what makes you productive in your work life. You have your own identity. And and for me to try to impose my identity on you is just, is just wrong. You should not be buying things based on what makes me productive, based on what makes me happy. You need to buy things based on what makes you happy. And secondly, even if you disagree with that side of it, just from a practical point of view, people still have a lizard brain mentality. If you start insulting somebody for their purchasing decisions after they get screwed, they're then going to associate their identity with the device that they purchased because you're saying they're stupid because of what they purchased, which is now going to cause them to reflexively defend the company that screwed them because if they don't defend the company that screwed them, that must mean that they're actually an idiot. So it doesn't get accomplished what you want accomplished. They're not going to not buy that thing again. They're going to double down on the decision because many of you Human beings are stubborn. If you tell somebody who has an F-350 diesel that they're bad because they have an F-350 diesel, they're not going to change their vehicle choice. They're going to roll coal in every Toyota Prius that drives by them. So I've never insulted the victim. I always focus on the victimizer. Today, special circumstance. So I have osteoarthritis in both of my knees. And because I have osteoarthritis, you know, my dad has had his knees replaced, my grandpa had knee issues starting in his late 20s, I don't like having to bend over to tie my shoes. It's just become more and more uncomfortable for me as I have gotten older to, to bend over like that. And because I don't like to bend over, I decided to find a shoe that was fitting for me. So I got this thing over here. It's the Skechers Arch Fit because a lot of the shoes that I can easily slip my foot into are not shoes that I would feel comfortable doing my speed walking in. But this one, I can slip my foot in without bending over and I also can walk in them and speed walk. That's one of the pros of the shoe. The downside of this shoe is that if I wear this thing outside, my chances of ever having sex again go down almost as much as they would if I drove my favorite vehicle over here to my, pick up my date. 1994 Mercury Tracer. Look at that sexy beast. But the thing I like about this shoe is that I don't have to bend over when I put it on because I don't like bending over. But do you know who likes bending over? My friend, because my friend over here, Mr. Dr. Evil Genius, you know what he did? He didn't want to have to bend over to put his shoes on either. So he decided to spend $350 on shoes that require a fucking app that they decided to retire after making the $350 shoe. Nike Adapt App Retirement. Released the Adapt BB, self-facing basketball shoe. After five years of retiring the Adapt App and removing it from the Apple and Android App Stores globally on August 6, 2024. So if you have this application, you better find a couple of extra copies of that APK and store them somewhere because if you don't, you're not going to be able to use all the features on this shoe again. This shoe costs $350 fucking dollars. And in spite of the shoe costing $350, they couldn't find somebody at Nike to maintain this application. Now, you may think, why is that important? You could just have an old version of the app. As many of you know, particularly if you use Android, older Android applications are not going to work with newer versions of Androids. It's usually like you know, a packaging thing, a library thing. You have to have somebody there to maintain it. And Nike has enough damn Android and iPhone applications that I'm sure that the, the, the one person who's going to spend a couple of hours on this every couple of years in order to make sure that this application works with newer versions of Android. I just have a feeling that Nike's got enough money for that. But that doesn't matter that they have enough money for that because they already took your money for the shoe. So, again... Why do they have to give a shit about you as a customer when you've already paid, as the South Park Cable Company CEO would tell you? So this is a shoe that has several different features. It has a feature where the laces will tie themselves for you. So you have your phone. I could slip my feet into the shoe, and without bending over, I could tap a button on my phone, and I could have my shoes lace themselves. Once you can no longer use the application, you will then have to bend over the way my friend did when he purchased this product in order to have the shoe tie itself. And if I'm going to be bending over anyway, I might as well tie my own fucking shoe. And if you want to change the colors of the lights on the shoes, you need the application. So that's a feature that's going away entirely. At the very least, with the tying of the shoe, you can press a button on the shoe and then it'll work. It's possible I'm wrong. I'm always open to admitting that I could be wrong. This man is more fit than me. He's more athletic than me. He's more flexible than me. He's got better precision than me. Maybe it's possible that if he's talented enough, instead of having to bend over to tie the shoe, he could just click them together over and over again, like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. And if he's lucky enough, maybe he'll hit the button on it where they can tie themselves. He could say, there's no place like home. There's no place like New York. And if he says it enough times, maybe somebody from the Department of Consumer Affairs will actually help him get his money back from Nike. Oh, oh wait, I forgot they're all on crack. 
there's no place like home, my friend, is there? And you know what the mo one of the funniest things is about this? Is that at one point in time, Nike released a software update for the shoe. I'm not kidding. That bricked the shoe. Can you imagine in your lifetime somebody telling you that a pair of shoes was bricked from a software update? There was a recommended software update and it broke the shoes, including making them unwearable to anybody who wanted to tighten the laces. At the time, Nike said the problem affected a small number of owners, demonstrating that Nike has taken on the language of professional gaslighters, the like of Apple or the women that I choose to go out with. This is a video that I did five years ago, and let me know if you recognize some of the vocabulary there. Small number, small number. Small number, 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 holy shit. Are you well, it's not a small number of people that got fucked over by Nike, it's 100% of their customers. You know why I take this so personally? You know why it bothers me so much? Because this man, my friend, that was my friend, this Benedict Arnold motherfucker, he told me that he watched my content. He told me that he listened to it, that he liked it, that it was good consumer advocacy. This man has not watched a video of mine a day in his life. He was lying. He was buttering me up so that I'd pay for his personal training services. You claim to watch my stuff and then you bought shoes that require an app? Get I've watched your videos, sir. I've even commented on them, and I've listened to the lessons within them, and I can cite them. Even if I don't listen to your own advice, like the advice you gave me last September, that was the advice in your videos, how to get out of crap relations, that was a crap relation, when you told me why, and I didn't do it. But that's different. I'm allowed to criticize you. You're not allowed to criticize me. That's what friendship means to me. I'm not a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. People are asking on Reddit for this application to be open sourced, because if Nike's not going to support it anymore, why not open source it so somebody from the community can maintain it? Well, if they do that, you're not going to buy the newest version of the shoe. Are you going to buy the Adapt 2, the Adapt 4, the Adapt 8? Because they need to keep getting your money. It's not enough that you paid $350 for a pair of fucking shoes that they bricked. You're going to have to pay again and again and again. I bought those shoes because I don't like bending over. But apparently, you do. Pause. This company right here. This piece of shit company, they can't even make a fucking nor- Look at this, look at this piece of shit. Somebody recommended that for the speed walking thing that maybe I'd feel comfortable if I got this shoe. I usually don't buy Nike shit. This is after a fucking week. Look at this, look at this, look at this rubbish. Look at this junk. This shoe is $150. It's not because I abused it. I can barely walk, much less run. This thing fell apart in a week. At the very least, it can't be bricked with an app. At the very least, I can tie them myself. Now, I know there's people out there that are going to say, well, it costs money for ongoing maintenance to maintain an app, and you only paid once. Maybe the solution is to make them a subscription. Maybe the Nike Adapt BB2 will be a subscription. After this, if you haven't learned your lesson, if they make a Nike Adapt BB2 that requires a subscription to work, and I hear that you've bought them, I will, fly, I will do something that I promised I would never do for the rest of my life. I will fly back to New York City. I will go to that cesspool of a shithole that I despise more than anything on planet Earth. I, I don't give a fuck that you're more swole than me, that you look like a gigantic, roided personal trainer, even though you're all natural, just like Daniel and Bailey. I don't give a fuck that you're more swole than me. I'm going to go back to New York City. I'll start training with Yuli again with the tan and the bong and the lap. I will take your shoes away from you faster than the bullies did to me in sixth grade. I will make sure that you never wear a shoe that requires an app again. Because I'm a true friend. Which is more than I can say for you, Benedict Arnold. You hurt me. I'm not gonna remember this. I'll remember this. Alright? I'll remember this. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.